The Town of Plainville Established in 1721 at the Geographical Center of Connecticut. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our town council meeting. Today is Monday, April 16th, 7 p.m. We'll begin with the flag, miss, uh, with the pledge. Mr. Saunders, if you'll lead us, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, yeah, why don't you do that? Now? Okay, Madam Chair. Yes. Motion to ratify a uh, public hearing. Motion to ratify establishing a public hearing for Monday, April 16th, 2018, at 7 o'clock in the Municipal Center to hear public comment regarding an additional appropriation of $550,000 to the Health Insurance Fund. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you for doing that. Um, before we begin our um, working part of our meeting, we have a presentation to make tonight, which is um, one of our former council members is here. Danny, would you come up to the podium, please? Welcome back. Welcome back to the room. For those who may not know, this is Danny Carrier, former councilman and uh, member of the, the town council. He um, is being awarded a chair this evening, as we traditionally do with all of our former council members. Um, just a little bit of information about Danny. He, um, when he was on the town council, he was liaison to the Capital Projects Building Committee, the Aviation Commission, and the Economic Development Commission. He would um, faithfully attend his duties and come back often with um, very good information and help the council understand what some of those organizations are dealing with. So we do miss that from you, Danny, but you know, I wanted to um, thank you publicly for everything that you've done as a member of the town council. Danny has been a very good member. He is very thoughtful. He gave a lot of consideration to the issues before him. He's a very good-natured person, and he has a wonderful smile, as you're going to see. <laughs> so with that, I do want to, on behalf of the town council, thank you again so very much for everything that you've done. I hope you will continue to participate in town government. We need the new generation to come up and take our places as we move on to our other exciting lives, and I hope you'll be part of that. So thank you again so very much for everything that you've done. Now, you get to choose either a chair like that, or a rocking chair. Yeah, um, I, I chose a rocking chair. Oh, good for you. <laughs> good for you. I have one, and I think they're a lot of fun. So thanks again, Danny. We miss you, and come back again. Would you like to say it? Yeah, I just want to say I, I chose a rocking chair. I, uh, I hope eventually I'll get old enough that I can read a book while rocking there, <laughs> hoping. Uh, that was my plan. My kids keep me a little busy right now. Um, I just wanted to thank the council and the town manager. I mean, it was a, it was a great learning experience over the last four years. Um, you know, you get a lot of information. You understand uh, a lot more of where your tax dollars are spent when you're involved like that. And uh, that was my main reason for getting involved. And um, really, I, I appreciate the chair. And thank you for the nomination to the Capital Projects Building Committee. It's a little bit easier of a uh, meeting schedule and a time frame, so I enjoy that part too. And the last thing is I wanted to say sorry about last weekend or two weeks ago. I just completely slipped my mind, and uh, <laughs> and that's it. Okay, thanks, Danny. Oh, big smile, too. 
<laughs> As is his way. Okay. On to our next order of business. We have a public hearing, and I will ask our town clerk to please read the notice for us. Thank you. Notice is hereby given that the Plainville Town Council will hold a public hearing at 7 p.m. on Monday, April 16, 2018, in the council chambers of the Municipal Center, 1 Central Square, to hear public comment regarding the consideration of an additional appropriation of $550,000 to the Health Insurance Fund, dated at Plainville, Connecticut, this 12th day of April. Thank you. Uh, Robert, before we um, take comment from the public, could you just give a brief background as to um, why we're doing this appropriation and um, the reasons going forward why um, we have to supplement that fund? Yes. Several months ago, the town council heard a report on the uh, health insurance fund, which is a self-insurance fund that the town uh, manages. Uh, since March of last year, it's been running a deficit. That deficit right now is sitting at about $2 million. Uh, the council uh, made a determination that uh, that they would uh, uh, replenish that that deficit by doing additional appropriations. This is the second of what might end up being uh, four additional appropriations to fill in that deficit. Uh, I will tell you that uh, mm -hmm. the uh, the claims continue to outpace the uh, expected claims, and and uh, but we have um, we have been working with the state comptroller's office uh, to. Uh, to, and it looks like we'll be in a position to switch over to the uh, state partnership plan beginning July 1st, which was, which is, a, you know, a guaranteed plan. Uh, I, I still believe that the self-insurance fund over the long run has saved the town a significant amount of dollars. It's just that uh, came at a bad time in terms of, in terms of, uh, you know, at this point in time. So, okay. especially with loss of state aid. So, so this is just a procedural matter from my perspective to, to backfill the uh, the deficit, which needs to be done. There's no, there's no choice with regards to that it's owed and, and it needs to be uh, taken care of. Okay, thank you. I'll open the floor for anybody who wishes to speak to the public hearing. Please come to either podium and state your name and address. Does anybody wish to speak to the public hearing tonight? Yes, ma'am. I'm Candace Hall, 113 Shuttle Meadow Road where the stop signs don't mean stop. I was very surprised to learn that Plainville dis had decided to become self-insured, had, had years ago decided to be self-insured. I'm not sure that there are that many towns or cities that have ch ch chosen that. I think that uh, with the um, increased cost of medical care, it's, it is obvious that the town should have been part of a real insurance uh, program. So I support the efforts of the town to go with the state. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak to the public hearing? John? John Kislick, 65 Forest Hill Avenue. I realize that you have to approve this, but uh, something the town manager just said, this will be the second for, I believe, 550,000 two times. He said four more. I, I was said four more, I said a total of four. Oh, okay, I misunderstood you, because that's what I thought it was, it was gonna be four. Yes. And it'd be 2.1 or whatever it right. was. So that's what it is, okay. But Sorry, I, may, I might have misspoke, John. So. But, but just four. to be clear, it's a total of four. Okay. okay. So what that all of that is coming out of our undesignated fund balance, right? Correct. Maybe, I don't know if in the financial dashboard today it'll tell us, but how much is going to be left in that fund? Will that come out in financial dashboard or does anybody know what because we're taking off uh, two million dollars, two plus million, what does that leave us in our fund balance? Um, could you answer where are we currently are with the fund balance, please? Well, after we take, after we make this appropriate, you want to know after no, we make you, this appropriation? It means after the two million dollars, we'll yeah, be, we'll be at approximately uh, twelve. We're estimating about twelve percent. What does that come to? When uh, is it six million? No, it's, eight, left? it's at least eight million. Eight million left. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. 
Does anybody else wish to speak to the council on the public hearing? Yes, sir. Uh, David Spencer, 127 Milford Street, um, extension. Um, well, for, first, I, I have a, a request. Uh, some of us senior citizens don't hear quite as well as we did 30 years ago. And, um, you know, the town was gracious enough to give you all microphones. And sometimes I can hear you quite well, and sometimes I can't even understand a word you're saying. Um, so I, mean, I just, you know, for my sake and other people who have, might have some hearing loss, it would be nice if you'd use those microphones, please. You know, I'd appreciate it because I don't want to misunderstand or mishear you. Um, the budget vote, do we call it a referendum? I don't know, referendum or vote is next Tuesday, right? Okay, it'd be hard to know that. Uh, by how little, how little it is promoted in this town. There's not a sign promoting it in front of the town hall. There's not a sign promoting it in front of the firehouse where it's going to be held. And in the past, I've talked to people who missed it. They wanted to go and they just, you know, people are busy. Not everybody pays as much attention as everybody else. And... Uh, People have missed it. I mean, if I wasn't, I um, mean, we had the referendum a year ago on, on the Wheeler School, and you were very good at promoting that. We saw, uh, I saw something come up on the library website. We saw PTO money used to make, manufacture these signs, which, you know, I thought PTO money was for field trips and things like that. Uh, we saw people walking around at the uh, family fun fest, and actually some of them weren't telling the truth. And um, there's, I, I see no, you know, if I didn't know better, I, I would think you might be trying to suppress the vote a little bit. I mean, I, I would like it to be, you know, it's too late this year, but in the future, I would really love to see it promoted so that more and more citizens are aware of it, maybe can get aware of the issues there. And, um, you know, I mean, uh, that, that's all I got to say about that, that um, issue. This public hearing, though, is about appropriating money for our insurance fund. Did you want to speak on that? I know that you kind oh. of went on a different topic, but... Okay, I, 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 I'm I sorry. No, that was, that was my, 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 okay. my, All right. I, okay. I didn't understand it. Maybe I, I came okay. in a couple minutes late. That's fine. Okay. Thanks. Kathy. Thank Kathy. Yes. Uh, John, I just want to correct one thing on that fund balance. It is going to be closer to $6 million and it's going to be somewhere around 10 or 11%. So you are closer to the right number. I was talking to John. John Kislick. He was talking to John. Oh, I'm sorry. Does anybody else wish to speak to the council on the public hearing? On the public hearing, again. Yes, Roberta. <coughs> Roberta Loria, 18 Perrin Road. Um, I just have a question for clarification, please. Um, it was mentioned before that there's going to be four installments. So it sounds like the only referendum we're going to have is the one that's going to occur in June, and the rest are just going to be transferred over. Is that correct? Like we did uh, the first time? I, I think you have two things um, coming on top of mm -hmm. each other. The referendum that we're planning on in June is for the purchase of fire trucks. And this is to transfer money out of our fund balance to cover shortages in our health insurance. Okay. Now we do have, we are going to have to make additional appropriations in order for us to make that account okay. whole. So there, there are, they're kind of different. Okay, so is that, issues. I guess my, my question was, where I was a bit confused, is I thought if we, we reach a certain amount, I mean, because this is 550, I thought that our charter says something about we can't go, if we're over 500, 
we have to have some sort of referendum or a vote. I'm, I'm just trying to understand for clarification. Okay. If the charter 10%. refers to a percentage of the budget. Okay, so it's not an exact number. It used to be 500000 but it, it, was. It, was okay. it was changed several years ago to a percentage of the budget. Okay. And that is a little bit over 550000 right Okay, now. thanks for that clarification. You're welcome. Does anybody else wish to speak to the public hearing? Yes, sir. Dave Albert, Holly Bear Lane. Um, I just wonder, is, is this like a one-shot deal with the costs, or is it an, an across-the-board expenditures that weren't anticipated? This is not the only appropriation we're going to be making to the insurance fund. Oh, We've already okay. made one. This is, is this number two? We have pro probably two more that we're going to have to do in order to make that fund whole. No, I, I meant in general, what's causing this, this deficit? Um, what, what's causing is it, it is one are, claim or two no, no, claims no. or is We're it an awkward? We're experiencing um, the claims experience? that far exceed what we anticipated. And this has been going on for over a year now. Okay. So the claims that are coming in exceed what we had budgeted for and what we were advised we could expect. So. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Okay, and this is contractually your, I, I agree, uh, it's union, union, is it un, union? Well, it's the employees of the, the town of Plainville and the Board of Education okay. that are and, in and this when does insurance that, plan. When does that come up? When for does it come up? Yeah. I, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Oh, I'm, I mean, it's part I, I'm of the, guessing it's part this of is the contractual, right? the package that our, you know, that we right? have negotiated with all of our various unions in the town, whether it's the police or the teachers or, or the, or, you Yeah, know. and I'm just asking when those agreements They come actually up. Um, come up at different times. Some of them are three-year contracts. They're, they don't always expire at the same time. Okay. What we're trying to do now is to move off of a self-insurance program, yeah. and we're going to join a group of other towns yeah. and participate in a state plan. It's not the state of Connecticut employee plan, but it's a plan that the state has allowed to occur so that towns can join into a coalition and, you know, the larger numbers of participants Hopefully, it will help our um, ability to pay. Well, there's is a little bit, a little bit of confusion. One is, is that we negotiate with the employees as to what type of benefits that they would, you know, that that you know, uh, they would uh, receive, how much they would pay for those benefits, how much the town would pay for those benefits. The town determines whether it's going to be a, a fully insured plan or a self-insured mm -hmm. plan. Back in the late 90s, the town decided that, they, that it was more cost. They believed that was at that time the council felt it was more cost-effective to have a self-insurance program. So, so we don't negotiate with the unions whether it's going to be fully insured or self-insured. Uh, we just we just negotiate on the benefits themselves. So, the state plan benefits are pretty much comparable to the to the self-insurance benefits. So, negotiating with unions really doesn't have anything to do with how the, the plan gets funded. Uh, when I say that uh, I believe that we've saved money over uh, many many years, it's because if you take the state plan rates that are being uh, uh, that we would move into. They're significantly, significantly higher than what we've been paying over the last 15 years. So what that indicates to me is that during that period of time, we've been pretty much below a fully insured rate for a long period of time, and it saved us money. It has caught up to us, you know, recently because we've had a very unusual year with with the claims. We have, you know, they, they estimated that we would have uh, six claims that would go over. Uh, our uh, 70, you know, what they consider large claims of $75,000. We've had 21 claims exceed $75,000 in the last year. So uh, uh, that's a very unusual situation, but given our particular circumstance, uh, uh, the council uh, asked the, the staff to look into a, a, a more, uh, uh, a fully insured plan or something that would be a guaranteed rate rather than, you know, the ups and downs given the, the, the you know, economy in the state, uh, you know, the way that, you know, the economies of the state right now, and uh, that's that's what we're moving towards. But just to, you know, summarize, uh, the employees don't bargain whether it's a self-insurance plan or a fully insured plan. That's determined by the town and was determined by the town back in the uh, late 90s. Okay, but, but we are speaking to them now to explain to them the move that we're trying to make, and, and we need to make sure that our unionized... Uh, 
employees understand <clears throat> what we're doing and they agree to it. Right. Well, they don't have. It's a comparable plan, so they, they, they you know, that we, we are can speaking move them to in them. without their. Without we are their speaking permission. to them, though, so that. Well, as we would to any employee, when we're going to change their health insurance plan, we're going to explain to them why, you know, what the differences are and what it means to them. You know, that that would be something that we would normally do for for our employees, but. As far as bargaining towards it, it's a comparable plan. So we, we the, the contracts allow for us to move into this, but uh, we we don't do it without at least discussing it with the union and filling them in on what it's, what it's about. And in fact, the unions have been promoting this plan for a couple of years themselves to begin with. So, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody else wish to speak to the council about the public hearing, Mr. Edmund? <coughs> Joel Edmond, 63, Alleyberry Lane, overlooking <coughs> the old historic Playable Canal and Horse and Mule Hall Trail, otherwise called the towpath. Mr. Edmond, this, Mr. Edmund, I, I don't want you to get started. This portion is to speak to the public hearing about the appropriation to our insurance fund. It's not the open portion that you usually speak at. So uh, do you Will want to be? speak about the public hearing? Will Regarding be, the appropriation? Will there be op an open tonight? I'm, so, I'm sorry? Will there be an open tonight? Oh, yes, yes. It's oh. later on in the meeting, though. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. I, I understand. That's no no problem. Yeah. We'll I let you know when it's time. I'm conflicted. You'll hear okay. about it later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does anybody else wish to speak to the public hearing? Anybody else wish to speak to the public hearing? Joanne? Joanne Edmond, 166 West Main Street. As, for instance, as like there have been for other instances issues in this town, it looks as though we've been caught again with our pants down around our ankles. This should have been figured out that if, in fact, there were overages, how were you going to take care of it? Who was going to pay? Well, good old taxpayer. Get them right by the neck and squeeze them half to death. It just is... Another one of the issues, like Old Linden Street School, you had a chance to sell it, cost us $3 million to tear it down. Crumb rubber crap over there at the high school on the football field, we're going to have to replace it, meaning the taxpayer, the trail. I have to keep bringing up the trail, because you want the trail, it's a want, not a need. And that's going to be a budget line item. That's going to cost us a lot of money down the line. By the time that gets built, then it comes up for repair, maintenance, and patrol, and all the safety issues that, that are going to hit it. It's not going to be the wonder uh, fix-all um, economic thing that comes through this town. And the dog park, that's, that's going to be another budget line item. And that should not, for the dog's sake, that should not happen. You don't have a right spot for that. So, but this uh, insurance thing should have been figured out a long time ago, I would say. It's too bad that it wasn't. Because now it's costing us $2 million dollars. Very interesting how you, you're taking 550 out of the, the f piggy bank without having to go to referendum. Don't let the people have to say anything about it except at this hearing. It just, it just doesn't seem right. It hits me all wrong. Does anybody else wish to speak to the public hearing? Anybody else? Last chance. Okay. I will close the public hearing. Thank you for your comments. 
We'll move on to the next item on our agenda, minutes of the previous meeting. May I have a motion to approve? Madam Chair? Yes. Motion to approve the minutes of April 2nd, 2018 special meeting and regular <coughs> meeting a meetings April 4th, 2018. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Announcements and reports. Does anybody have any announcements or reports to make tonight? Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. Yeah, the three groups to which I'm the liaison met last week, and just a quick highlight from each. Um, Tuesday night was at the uh, Library Trustees, and they are in the last steps of hiring a new director for the Plainville Public Library. Uh, Wednesday was Conservation Commission, and an event coming up before our, n our next meeting is the Pequabic River Cleanup on Saturday, uh, May 5th, between 9 and 12 noon, and I believe the access point is going to be the access road near the West Cemetery uh, to do that. And uh, Committee on Aging, of course, Senior Center is always very busy, and uh, two things they're planning are the grandparents uh, raising grandchildren, statewide conference again coming up in May, I believe, and uh, I'll have future information on a program that they're planning in June with the Department of Veteran Affairs um, gentleman that has been coming on doing uh, appointments with individual persons. They're planning a June program that uh, we'll have more information on in the future. Okay. Thank you very much You're for welcome. that. Does anybody else have anything? No? Okay, we will move on to appointments and resignations. We have one resignation. Motion to accept with regret the resignation of Jeff Romano from the Plainville Fire Department. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? I would ask that um, we send a letter of acknowledgement. Mr. Romano has been a Plainville firefighter for decades. He's been doing this a very long time and um, a letter of appreciation from the town council I think is appropriate and he certainly de deserves our thanks for his many years of dedication and service in that role. So could we uh, make sure we get a letter out to Mr. Romano? Will do. Thank you. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Are there any other appointments tonight or resignations? Board of Education, is there anybody here to report for the board? I have a report. Um, the only things that uh, the board wanted to remind everybody that the superintendent showcase is this Wednesday at 630 in the Plainville High School cafeteria. It will feature student musical performances, numerous demonstrations such as science experiments, robotics, a chance to hear more about the proposed school resource officer position from Chief Catania and an update on the Wheeler and Plainville High School projects and much more at that uh, superintendent showcase. Also, they want everybody to know that they are working with the Plainville police to help with the safe return of three high school students who have been missing since late last week. That's it. Hey. Report of the town attorney, there's no report tonight. So, Robert, we are on to your, your report. Thank you. I have a couple of items. The first is the 2018 Neighborhood Assistance Act. The Connecticut Neighborhood Assistance Act tax credit program is designed to provide funding for municipal and tax-exempt organizations by providing a corporation business tax credit for businesses who make cash contributions to these entities. Businesses can receive a credit of 60% of their approved contribution to certain programs approved by the State Department of Revenue Services. First step in the process is for the Town Council to conduct a public hearing for those local entities that wish to participate in the program. There is an item under new business that would set the public hearing date at the next Town Council meeting to be held on May 7th. Next item I have is the fire truck acquisitions ordinance. Bond Council has drafted the ordinance appropriating $2.1 million for the acquisition of two fire trucks and authorizing the issue of bonds and notes in the same amount to finance the appropriation. Before considering this ordinance, the town council must first conduct a public hearing. There is an item under new business that would set the public hearing uh, during the next town council meeting to be held on May 7th as well.
Next item I have is the Northwest Drive Rehabilitation Project. On March 13, 2018, the town received seven bid proposals for the Northwest Drive Rehabilitation Project. The low bid was submitted by B&W Paving and Landscaping of Waterford in the amount of $773,371. The engineer's estimate for this work was $836,360. Project would repave Northwest Drive from the Pequabic River Bridge to Perrin Road. This project is being funded through a state grant that will cover the entire cost of the project. There is an item under new business that would award the contract to rehabilitate a portion of Northwest Drive to B&W Paving and Landscaping in the amount of $773,371. Just for your information purposes, B&W Paving also did their paving of Quick Street last year, so we have some experience with them as well. They did a good job. Next item I have is the Memorandum of Understanding for the Plainville Funeral Home. The Economic Development Agency is recommending a 50% tax abatement for five years for the new Plainville Funeral Home that is being constructed on Broad Street. The estimated cost of the 5,000 square foot facility is at least $765,000. The applicant will provide to the town verified documentation confirming the cost of the improvements upon the completion of the work. There is an item under new business that would authorize the town manager to execute a memorandum of understanding for the Plainville Funeral Home as recommended by the Economic Development Agency. Next item I have is the all-day budget vote, which is Tuesday, April 24th. Uh, this is a reminder that the all-day budget vote will occur next Tuesday, April 24th. Electors and property owners can vote from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the firehouse located on West Main Street. Uh, in response to a comment that was made during the public hearing, uh, we do put signs up about a week before the, uh, before the uh, vote, uh, mostly because if you put them up too early, people, you know, it actually works, and it, you know, again, I believe it works against you because, uh, you know, people get used to seeing the signs, and, and when they're fresh in your mind, uh, you know, a week in advance is probably, as far as signs are concerned, uh, makes a lot of sense. The the the, uh, the budget is held the same date each year, you know, the fourth Tuesday, so uh, it's a consistent date. It's not a date that moves around. So, uh, you know, we do we do we do put some signs up, uh, you know, uh, as far you know. So, anyhow, um, okay. with regards to the financial dashboard, uh, the financial dashboard through March 31st was included in the meeting information package. It's also been posted on the town website. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Scott to give a report on the financial dashboard and happenings. Good evening. Hi, Scott. Looking at the financial dashboard and the expenditures through March 31st, uh, the through that, the town budget has spent $40.1 million. This equates to 67.27%. This is actually 3.3% um, less than our two-year average, so we're coming in under that. Um, going on to the general government budget, uh, we've spent to date, uh, as of March 31st, $18.1 million, or 75.1%. This is about uh, half a percent over our two-year average, while the Board of Ed budget is coming in at $21.9 million. 61.93%, uh, which is 6.16% uh, lower than their two-year average. Um, moving on to overtime, uh, the police overtime, which is budgeted at 450000 through March 31st, they came in at 410000 um, which is about 91.1% of their budget, 23.3% less than the two-year average, uh, which is at 114%. Looking at the roadways overtime, um, they're coming in at 60% less than the two-year average. And that two-year average is a little skewed at 144%. It includes the Northwest Drive project two years ago. Moving on to buildings and grounds over time, they have spent 101% of their um, budgeted amount of 17000 a little over 17000 And this is 4% less than the two-year average there. Uh, and then moving on to the snow overtimes for roadways, um, they have spent 51000 or 128%. Uh, this is 13% less than the two-year average, um, and this does include all those storms that did occur in March. Hopefully we won't see any more snow, though. Um, moving on to buildings and grounds overtime, uh, they've spent 99.4% of their 
budgeted amount, and this comes in at 1.62% uh, over their two-year average. The hauler tonnages are running a little bit higher, uh, over 138 tons for the month of March. Moving on to the revenues, um, looking at all revenues, um, we have received to date um, 52,600,900, 52, and this is 88.3%. Um, our two-year average is 89%. Uh, this is a little bit less, but that's because there's some of that loss of revenue from the state that we uh, did not receive. It also is a higher base from the tax supplemental bills. Uh, moving on to the current taxes, we've received, as of March 31st, $44.2 million. Uh, this is 98.36%. Our two-year average comes in at 99.47%. And that, once again, that's just a little less because of the higher tax base that we've, um, we have now with the supplemental tax bill. Looking at the unassigned, the estimated unassigned fund balance, um, right now we're sitting at 13.95%, uh, which is a little over $8.1 million. And that does not include um, anything um, that would be discussed today with the additional appropriation. Moving on to the special funds, looking at the recreation expenditures. Um, their expenditure amount is $258,000. Um, through that, they've spent 193000 or 74.9%. Uh, this is 3.3% more than the two-year average. Uh, looking at their revenues, they have received 127000 um, which is about 59.3%. Um, it's 3.7% less than the two-year average there. Moving on to the airport um, budget, their expenditures uh, for 90000 uh, is what was budgeted. They have expended $81,876, uh, $81, and this is 60.9% less than the two-year average, and that's because there were a few projects that took place at the airport a few years ago. Looking at the revenues, they're sitting at a fund balance of $488,473. Uh, the revenues that we have budgeted for them to receive were $194,000. Um, through March 31st, they've received $143,000, um, which comes in at 3.17%. Uh, less than the two-year average. Uh, going on to the water pollution control facility, um, their expenditures, uh, they're running at about 78.2% for the year, and um, that is 2.36% more than the two-year average, while the revenues are 97.2%, um, and they're coming in about 4.5% less than the two-year average. For the library expenditures, um, right now, they have expended 76.8% of their budgeted amount, which is 5.64% less than the two-year average. And the revenue side of that for the library is coming in at 0.85% higher than the two-year average. Right now, they have received uh, $556,000. The health insurance, we do not have an updated uh, claims report for the month of March, so we still have the February months in there. As soon as we get that, we can update you guys with that information. And moving on to the major projects report, um, there was some money that was received back into the account for the park improvement fund. It was just some money that was over encumbered. Um, there was some small expenditures made for the turf field project, um, and then the road bond in the amount of 143,000 uh, for the Wheeler School project, which had the only other activity for the month of March. There were some expenditures um, for 513,000. And that, that would uh, conclude the financial dashboard and I will move on to the happenings. I apologize, I have three pages though, so <laughs> forgive me. Oh my goodness. Um, the Historical Society is hosting a mystery <clears throat> night at the museum on Tuesday, April 17th, which is tomorrow, at the Historic Center at 29 Pierce Street. The program begins at 7 p.m. with doors opening at 6.45. For those history detectives who want to head start in trying to identify artifacts and photographs from their collection, and these range from kitchen gadgets, school photos, to items related to World War II, the fabulous 50s, and the manufacturing legacy. Um, they also will provide refreshments. Moving on to the Senior Center, they are hosting uh, a, a Live Well with Diabetes workshop every Tuesday uh, from April 17th to, uh, through May 29th from 12.45 to 3.15 p.m. With the exception, they will not hold the program on May 8th. It's a free six-part series in which you'll learn meal planning, managing blood sugar, how to fight fatigue and deal with stress, how to deal uh, care for your feet, and how to set small achievable goals. On Thursday, April 19th at 9.30 a.m., they're also hosting a Losing Sight and Sound Without Losing Your Confidence. 
if you're an older adult with both hearing and serious vision loss, or if you care for a senior with these disabilities, this free two-hour seminar will teach simple strategies to improve communication. Technology devices will be demonstrated and resources will be provided. And this is being presented by the Eastern Connecticut Chapter for the Hearing Loss Association of America. And on Thursday, April 19th at 3 p.m., they're hosting a What's on Your Plate Key to Living a Healthy and Energetic Life. Uh, in which they go over some nutritional habits uh, that they would hope that you could follow to become healthier. Um, and then on Thursday, May 3rd at 10 a.m., they're posting a nutrition for arthritis symptoms. Uh, what, if anything, can nutrition do for arthritis among the shelves of expensive supplements which are really beneficial and which might be a waste of money? Join Miles Everett um, to take a look at these issues. And for any of these programs being hosted at the Senior Center, they ask that you do register at 860-747-5728. Moving on to the library on Saturday, April 28th, the library will be hosting their second showing of the monthly movie matinee, The Darkest Hour, at 1.30 p.m. On Thursday, May 10th at 1 p.m. and Saturday, May 26th, they'll be hosting their monthly movie matinee of The Greatest Showman. And moving on to public works, uh, property owners are able to schedule their one bulk pickup free of charge either in the spring or the fall. The bulk, uh, bulk collection for 2018 will take place on Mondays during the following periods. It runs now through June 25th, excluding Monday, May 28th, due to Memorial Day. Uh, and it'll pick back up for the fall on September 10th and run through October 29th. Any eligible residents must call CWPM at 860-793-6721 to schedule a pickup. And when calling, just please provide your name, address, a phone number, and a complete description of the items to be collected. And any call placed by 3 p.m. on Friday can be scheduled for collection on Monday. And if there is a high volume of collection that takes place on Monday, they will uh, be collecting on that uh, next day on the Tuesday. Um, there will also be a hazardous uh, household waste collection at the Burlington Highway Garage on Saturday, April 21st uh, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And the Burlington Highway Garage is located at 66 Belden Road, Burlington, Connecticut, 06013. And all residents are required to bring a photo ID when attending uh, the collection location. And this is the only hazardous um, waste collection for the springtime for residents. And the last uh, item I have is just kind of an update. On Thursday, April 5th, the United Way of Central Connecticut, West, uh, West Central Connecticut, presented the Town of Plainville with the Changemaker Award at their 16th annual Community Builders Reception. The award recognizes an individual company or uh, community collaboration that demonstrates the ability to create and or implement positive change. Over the past two years, the town of Plainville has increased the United Way campaign contributions by 12.7%. Uh, that is a big thank you to the town employees. Their generosity has had a positive impact on local programs and community initiatives funded by United Way of West Central Connecticut. And Assistant Town Manager Shirley Osley attended the reception and accepted the award on behalf of the town. And that's all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you, Scott and Robert. Does anybody have any questions for either Robert or Scott with their reports tonight? Well done. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Okay. Moving on, during this next portion of our meeting, we um, have public comments for the town council. During this time, we ask that you come to either podium, state your name and address. You will have three minutes to speak for one opportunity. I have one person that has signed up, so I will um, ask Catherine Labella to step to the podium first, and anybody that wishes to speak afterwards, just raise your hand and we'll recognize you. Catherine. Catherine Labella, 50 Pier Street. I oppose alignment C of the proposed trail through Plainville. This weekend, there were two significant Facebook posts about the newly surfaced section of the Farmington Canal Heritage Trail off of Northwest Drive, both referring to dog droppings. I will read one. My kids quote, my kids and I were enjoying the trail today and were disappointed to see how many people did not clean up after their dogs. Then in the parking lot, I was shocked at how many bags of dog poo are left on the ground. First, people need to clean up after their pets. Second, we need trash barrels so that people who do bag their dog poo can dispose of it. The trail is beautiful, let's not ruin it. As you know from the petition submitted to you by Pierce Street property owners and residents, this is but one of our concerns. 
The first warm day in spring and the new section of the trail is already contaminated with dog droppings. This section of the trail runs through an industrial park, less residential in nature than the Plainville neighborhoods being adversely affected by Alignment C. I'm a dog owner and believe that all dog owners should pick up after their animals. I do not condone people leaving dog droppings on any land. On the rare occurrences where I forgot to bring my, a bag with me, I mark the spot where my dog went and returned to pick it up. However, the industrial park lands are more spacious than many of the neighborhoods affected by the proposed alignment. If people are complaining about dog droppings and odor in a more spacious area now, can you imagine what will occur if a trail goes through a narrow neighborhood, not only adjacent to private property, but feet away from back porches, living rooms, and bedrooms? Property owners on Pier Street will be constantly picking up after trail users. You have defeated a motion putting a, dark, a dog park in a residential neighborhood because of the closest to a residence, neighborhood traffic congestion, and difficulty monitoring the activities. Please carefully watch the issues that are now happening with the new section of the trail and take them into consideration at your next vote. Would you want dog droppings and litter on your property? Should you or your animals be exposed to the viruses and parasites associated with these droppings? Would you want the congestion of the additional traffic? If not, then vote no. I respectfully request that this full statement be included as part of the public record along with the council minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak to the council? Yes. I'm Candace Hall, 113 Shuttle Meadow Road, and I just want to say that Catherine and I did not rehearse this. I wish to address two subjects tonight. I continue to be concerned about your approval of the Plainville connection to the Rails to Trails route, specifically the potential for accumulation of trash and debris along the route and the resulting impact on property owners and neighborhoods. An article in the April 13, 2018 Hartford Current reported that the Farmington Valley Trails Council was re recruiting volunteers to clear debris along the popular Farmington Canal Heritage Trail, known locally as the Rail Trail. And it said, the start of the season cleanup in 2016 brought out more than 200 volunteers that helped remove more than 11 cubic yards of trash and debris. 11 cubic yards is a lot of trash. Since the Plainville connection directly impacts several residential neighborhoods, I question whether the volunteer help promised by trail advocates, many of whom are not Plainville residents, will be sufficient to keep the area clean and whether the taxpayers will end up paying for maintenance. And I do not agree with your decision not to include monies for an immediately necessary replacement fire department vehicle, which is a serious public safety issue. I will admit that mathematics is not my strong point. I was an English major in college, but I did not wear a uniform. But as a taxpayer, I can see a decrease in my checking account balance whenever I pay my taxes, so I know that much about numbers. And as a library patron, I noted the elimination of Sunday hours because of financial issues. It is my understanding that monies in the amount of $75,000 were found in the budget to help fund the purchase of the vehicle. This was not approved, and the original budget is set to go to voters. What happened to that $75,000 savings? If Plainville could survive with this cut, why was the budget not amended to reflect the cut, saving the taxpayers $75,000? In today's economic hard time, every dollar counts. I respectfully request that the Hartford 
current article that I alluded to and my comments be reflected in the minutes of the town council. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak to the council? Roberta? Roberta Loria, 18 Perrin Road. Um, on August, uh, I'm sorry, April 2nd, I was here and I um, talked about some numbers um, based on some uh, research that I put together. And I had several phone calls, so you'll be happy to hear that your money's not wasted, that a lot of people do listen to Nutmeg TV. Um, people also stopped me uh, when I was going about my chores and things. Uh, in town asking questions about what I did. So I just wanted to take one quick moment, and I asked my husband to help me, to just um, go over those numbers. That's it. Um, between June 19th, 2017, and February 20th, 2018, this council heard 356 responses regarding the trail. Of the 356 responses, 232 were unique individuals from any location. Some of those were as far away as California based on their last response for this project for Plainville, 63% opposed the trail, 34% favored the trail, 3% were concerned, neutral, or suggested a realignment without expressing being opposed or in favor. I then looked at Plainville only residents, which totaled 169 unique individuals. Based on their last response to this project, 69% opposed the trail, 28% favored the trail, and 4% were concerned, neutral, or suggested a realignment without expressing being opposed or in favor. And as I mentioned at the last meeting, I um, looked at everything when I did this. Letters, uh, public hearing, um, uh, emails to Krog and the town of Plainville, which are one in the same, um, and I read everything. Um, I know we've talked in the past, if anybody's interested in looking at any of these letters, um, to see the town manager's office. Um, well, I know he's a very busy man, and I just want to let folks know that um, the information I gathered is public. You are more than welcome to look at it yourselves. Um, this information is located on the GAP Closure Study website. It is under Attachment A. The document's about 683 uh, pages long. So you are more than welcome. It's public information. You are more than welcome to look at all the letters um, like I did. Um, and I just think on a side note, based on what Kathy said, I too read all that Facebook information. And one thought that came to my mind as I was reading it is we had so many people who were in favor of this that bragged how they had so many volunteers. Well, where were those volunteers for that parking lot over the weekend with the complaints that were going on? A lot of people look at Facebook. I would think that they would have been the first ones down there to make sure this was all taken care of. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak to the council? Anybody else? Mr. Edmond. Try again. <coughs> Joel Edmond. 63 Alleyberry Lane, overlooking the old historic Plainville Canal and Horse and Mule Hall Trail, otherwise called the towpath that pulled the flat bottom boats back and forth to New Haven Harbor. But overlooking nothing else, due to the fact that I live on the very bottom of Redstone Hill. <clears throat> A little New England humor there. Uh, I'm wondering when the timer will start. As I stand here feeling like my back goes out more than I do, I am conflicted about the sad state of affairs of our town, state, and federal government. I would like to read an excellent editorial by Dan Devin from East Hampton that I feel is very pertinent. <clears throat> the heading is called Functionally Bankrupt. <clears throat> it's in a half recurrent. Functionally bankrupt, 
Connecticut is functionally bankrupt. Despite the two largest increases in state history, we have a structural deficit every year as far as the eye can see. With a long-term state employee bargaining agent coalition agreement extended to 2027, there is little the state can do except shift costs to municipalities and continue to raise taxes. The only problem is that as the state raises taxes, our revenues drop. We are already seeing the early stages of a death spiral in which more taxes result in increased foreclosures and an exodus to other states, resulting in even higher tax increases due to the shrinking tax base, resulting in more foreclosures and state exodus and on and on. The Democratic Party has become nothing more than an electioneering machine. Unions and social service groups provide the manpower and funding, and the politicians return that favor by wealth redistribution to their constituents. Well, the gravy train is about to be derailed. We saw it happen in Wisconsin, the birthplace of the union movement, where voters decided they could no longer afford big labor. Connecticut is at that same crossroads. This is what happens when Democrats run out of other people's money. <clears throat> now, Dan tends to blame the Democratic Party, but the GOP, when in power, has basically did the same thing. So blame them also. Like I said, I am conflicted. And it's budget time again. But now I will sit down and rest my back. And as always, no rail, no trail, and no thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak to the council that has not spoken? Anybody else? No. Oh, Mr. Frangos. Lou Frangos, 10 Fairbank Street. Uh, I have just a couple things for you. Uh, I see here on the uh, financial dashboard, and just so I want clarity, the old industry uh, street demolition, uh, project balance $289,000. What is left to be done at the old Linden street school? I thought it was pretty much cleaned up. I, I don't have an answer for what remains. I, I couldn't tell you that right off the cuff. Mr. Leaf, do you have any information about that? I think there may be a small appropriation to put in a, a, a concrete pad for an outdoor classroom. Uh, other than that, that project should be closed out shortly. Oh, okay, an outdoor classroom. Thank okay. you. The second thing is, uh, and this is a little bit more direct, uh, I had asked the question quite a, quite a time, time ago. In fact, Mr. Carrier at the time was a town council member. And I had mentioned the Wheeler School project, and I, what I was curious about is, did anybody present the idea of not uh, renovating but building new? Was that ever presented with costs? And I was told no. Well, then I find a document that said there was a number assigned to build as new. And the new number is 24 million, 900,000 and change. That was, that's built as new, as opposed to 23 million, 515 renovate as new. Now, what has me a little confused is that difference in costs from building a new building as opposed to renovating an old building, why would it be rejected at such a low cost in the grand scheme of things? Does, anybody, does the town council know that? I don't have an answer for you on that. I, I don't know, and I can't recall why the, I'm sure the project that we sent to referendum was looked over thoroughly by our capital projects building committee and the recommendation was made to go through a renovation process that 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 estimate was generated by the state when we were looking at renovate when we were up there trying to qualify for renovate like new uh, that that number is not a you know uh, 
it's just an estimate from the state based upon it's just what that's just an estimate from the state based upon their typical square foot you know basis and that school would have been uh, significantly smaller square foot than than what the current Wheeler school project is and, and I'm not even sure it included demolition but this is something that was generated by the state as part of their normal <coughs> review when they're comparing uh, uh, and whether to uh, allow for a renovate like new status for the for the uh, for the project but this was not generated at the beginning of the project this was generated as part of the state review that number well, and I'm not challenging who uh, to that point my I'm just saying if if I could buy something new simple me if I could buy something new that would cost me five dollars as opposed to buying something that's gonna cost me that's older at four dollars for the extra dollar I think I'd be interested in that and it doesn't seem I, I, bear in mind I don't say there's anything going on here that's wrong I'm just saying it just doesn't seem to add up to mother and I'm kind of confused why when I posed this question way back when, the town council, and it seems now the town council doesn't even know what I'm talking about. Thank you for your time. Okay. Does anybody else wish to speak to the council that has not spoken? Anybody else? John? John Kislak, 65 Forest Hill Avenue. <clears throat> we had three items. One of them right outside this building in front of the Toflon property and a diner. Could somebody look at them railroad tracks? Even if I go over them at five miles an hour, it's like you're going to lose a wheel. wonder if somebody in town could check it or get to the railroad department. The other thing, the dog park, I brought up at <coughs> last meeting, and I asked if the town council appointed the dog park committee, and you didn't. So... In my way of thinking, um, you know, Park and Rec does a good job, the committee and all the employees, so it has nothing to do with them. But I would think that a committee uh, that's appointed by Park and Rec, it would be a subcommittee. And from what I understand, these people who were appointed are not members of the Park and Rec. So my thing is, I think the council should officially appoint them. I mean, it's not a subcommittee. They're just people that were picked off, that were interested or something. And I, I think the town council should appoint them officially to make it official for the town council. That's just my opinion. The other thing, our charter, charter revision. I know towns do not like to do charter revision. And when you do a charter revision, you have to review the whole charter. But the last time, I can't remember, maybe four years ago or five years ago, we had a charter revision, and it changed our all-day budget vote changed from the third Tuesday to the fourth Tuesday now. But in that, Chapter 7, Section 6 for the all-day vote, I checked with two other towns that have our form of government and the same thing for voting on a budget, Berlin and Farmington, and they both have an absentee ballot for the budget vote. So I know we're not going to have a charter revision for one item, but it's something I'd like this council to keep in mind if, if and when we ever do a charter revision. You know, it, it, I think the taxpayers and citizens are getting beat on this. You know, a lot of people are going to be left out of that vote because of certain conditions. So I'd just like to have this council keep it in, in mind on the back burner if we ever do have a charter revision. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak to the council that has not done so? Anybody else? Okay. Thank you for your comments. We'll close that portion of our meeting. Oh, I'm sorry, Joanne. I didn't see your hand. I know. I apologize. That's okay. I've been known to force the... Don't, now, don't start. Don't start. I've been known to have this whole thing go into recess because of me. So. Name and address, though, please, first. Yeah. But I had to get that in. I got it. Go ahead. You got it. Joanne Edmond, 166 West Main Street. Oh, i got to get my glasses. Don't start. <laughs> get my glasses. I can't see anything. Don't start. No, we stopped the clock, Joanne. It's okay. Glasses. 
I had a bad day today, so. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah. And uh, again, I wish this would come at the beginning. We certainly do need prayer. Not only here, but in the classroom and for everybody. <coughs> and for this, oh dear God, our Heavenly Father, please grant our town council the wisdom, knowledge, strength, and courage to perform their elected duties and responsibilities to the citizens and charter of Plainville. Amen. And more than ever, you've got so many issues, you really do need to think carefully about what the people are asking for. We're asking that you don't build that trail. Forget about it. This town can't handle it. It's going to be nothing but trouble. It's going to be um, a drain on our finances. As I told you before, it's going to be a, a budget line item. And it's going to cost us a lot of money. And we're getting the squeeze on so many different things now. The sewer uh, bill, the, the this bill, the that bill. Um, it's just... It, the money you're taking out of the um, the, the the piggy bank, the unassigned funds for for the insurance, it's uh, it's uh, too much. And before you know it, we won't have any kind of uh, uh, pot, so to speak. So I would say that uh, you got to think very carefully about how you're spending the money. We don't need fancy schools. We don't need to have um, fancy football fields. That's, that's, that's a tragedy. Perfectly good earth, good grass field, torn up, destroyed for synthetics. And then you were going to put synthetics in the courtyard over and back of the, the Wheeler School. I, I just don't know what people are thinking about. Nobody seems to be using their heads. But the taxpayers are, 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 are really getting fed up with getting hit all the time. It's not fair. I rest my case. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak that has not spoken tonight? Anybody else? Okay. I will close that portion of our meeting and move on to the um, <coughs> item entitled New Business. We have a few motions to make this evening. So motion number one. Madam and, Chair. Yes. Motion to authorize the additional appropriation of 550000 from account 0100 32110 Zero 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 unassigned fund balance to account um, 0100 transfer out health insurance fund. <clears throat> second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Number two. Madam Chair, yes. motion to establish a public hearing for Monday, May 7th at 7 o'clock in the Municipal Center to hear public comment regarding 2018 Neighborhood Assistance Act proposals. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Number three. Madam Chair. Yes. Motion to establish a public hearing for Monday, May 7th, 2018 at 7 o'clock in the Municipal Center to hear public comment regarding an ordinance entitled Ordinance Appropriating $2.1 million for the acquisition of two fire trucks and authorizing issue of bonds and notes in the same amount to finance the appropriation. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Number four, please. Madam Chair? Yes. 
Uh, make a motion to award bid number 2018-01E Northwest Drive Rehabilitation Project to B&W Paving and Landscaping, Waterford, Connecticut, in the amount of $773,371. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Number five. Madam Chair? Yes. Motion to author, uh, approve and authorize the town manager to execute a memorandum of understanding for the Plainville Funeral Home is recommended by the Economic Development Agency. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Number six. Madam Chair? Yes. Motion to approve the tax refunds as listed on the addendum. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Mr. Lee, do we have any other items of interest to discuss? Just one item. Uh, that is uh, with respect to the remarks regarding the railroad crossing uh, uh, on West Main Street. Uh, I have been in touch with the State Department of Transportation. That is a state road. Ask them if they could, uh, you know, it's their road, and that, uh, you know, they should contact the railroad company and uh, ask them to make those repairs so uh, the message has been delivered. Okay. The, the railroad company does not respond uh, certainly very quickly to uh, to neither the town or the DOT but uh, uh, we have noted that. Okay. Anything else? No. That's it? Okay. May I have a motion to adjourn? <clears throat> Madam Chair, motion yes. to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much.